Hey, Jock, and excited about today's guest. We have Caesar from Equity Pro. Caesar is a guy that I met down here in Orlando uh, probably about six to eight months ago, uh, and, and just a, a wealth of knowledge in the world of wholesaling. And I wanted to bring him on the show today to kind of share his knowledge and share some of his experiences for anybody that might be out there uh, watching this who has a strong interest in uh, wholesaling. And actually, he's also a realtor and uh, works for a broker and a brokerage that specifically focuses on wholesaling. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Caesar from Equity Pro. How are you? I'm good, man. Thank you for introducing me. <laughs> Tell, 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 tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and kind of how uh, you ended up in the world of real estate. Um, you know, I know you're locally, uh, originally, excuse me, from uh, Miami, Florida. So uh, tell everybody kind of what your story is and, and how you ended up here uh, in, in Orlando doing what you're doing. Uh, I mean, yeah, I was born and raised in Miami and uh, decided to move up back here with uh, now the wife uh, back to Orlando because we went to UCF together and, and it was a uh, we loved the Orlando we loved this city and, and previous to doing all this real estate stuff I was substitute teaching and trying to find my way into the teaching world and in, in Orange County and I think the some things about turned me off and then I just started getting into more so the real estate business industry in, in total um, the first thing that I got myself into was doing trying to become a mortgage originator, and uh, that was very challenging. The tests were very hard. Uh, I don't think I felt very comfortable trying to loan people money, so I kind of gave that up, and I was like, well, if this is hard, then maybe real estate itself may be a little easier to handle on that end. So I somehow just stumbled with the first company in here in Orlando, it was called Meridian Trust Investments, and we hung out with them for a while. You know, still trying to get my bearings with real estate. Didn't know anything about it at all, nothing. So I expected to just, you know, face plant in the process and just make mistakes and just learn it, just like any other thing. So eventually, the company shut down within three months. Um, fortunately, I ended up getting my license through that throughout the whole mess, and within. A week, I was just searching through jobs 24-7. Uh, I was putting resumes out, and I don't know if I wanted to do traditional or investment. I, I was leaning more towards investment than having interviews with old town brokers in, in here, local, uh, Watson, and other traditional real estate companies. It just, uh, I think I ended up finding Equity Pro out of nowhere. Um, it just ended up being something that I got called for an interview. Ben Young is the broker there. He's real cool what he does and uh, went through all that. And I think a week later, I got the call and saying, hey, can you go ahead and work for us? And um, it was perfect timing because around that time frame, I think it was like uh, I was, was getting married and, and it's just got a new house. So everything just kind of came into play. So um, still there now, and loving it and been wholesaling since. Okay, that, that's a, a an interesting uh, journey that you had. They're very similar to mine. You know, I'm a licensed realtor, as you know, and um, you know, I still, you know, will, will list properties and give people advice and consult um, if those opportunities present themselves. But my heart, my passion is in uh, investing. Can Can you share with us why, through through your journey, through your eyes, when you went through the process? why you felt a little bit more at home in the investment side of things. I'm sure we've got some people out there watching this that may say, Hey, I'm thinking about getting my real estate license. Um, because you know, the general population usually looks at real estate as what they see on TV. You know, you're either some construction guy that knows how to fix houses and put a bunch of money into them and flip them in 30 days. Like you see on these TV shows, or you also see like million dollar listings. So you've got these guys in these sharp suits and, you know, leather shoes, et cetera, et cetera. Got the drivers and everything else. And they're hanging out at these parties and they're selling yeah. multi-million dollar properties. So 
you know, tell us a little bit more about why you chose investment versus just traditional retail and selling of real estate. I'm more of a numbers guy, so I, and I like the business aspect and entrepreneurial aspect about it. Um, and so that's what made me stuck in there. I think, you know, there's, of course, there's a huge difference between wholesaling and doing traditional real estate. Um, one, traditional, you have to deal with the, the buyers. There's a lot more emotion going behind that. Not to say that investment doesn't, but there's a lot of different process. And if, you're, if you want to do that, then you want to cater to that. There's no problem with that. But then on the investment side, you're dealing with investors, investors who've been in the business for a, a while or just beginning. And most of them are building their portfolio and their investment. And I think most of that is, of course, going towards retirement and then their own lives. There's a lot more involved in that as well, besides just the numbers. And I think that's what kind of put me into that aspect because I know that I can help someone buy a distressed property at a, at a, at a rental um, or a duplex or make them get buy their first flip. I think there's a lot of interesting aspects about it in terms of the, the distressed properties, knowing how much it's going to cost to rehab. And I think the, the end goal, once all that is done, uh, working with the flippers uh, and seeing the end product of that, that is wonderful to see, to be able to have those properties listed um, and see the new pictures and comparing and contrasting those uh, the old photos to the new property is just amazing in itself. And um, being, it, being in it for almost two years now, I, I don't see myself doing anything else at this point. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, something might change. I have no idea, but uh, I'm just going to keep writing it. I don't know if I'm ever going to open my own brokerage or anything like that, but uh, I'm proud to be a good cock in the wheel in, the, in my brokerage now because um, we, we're growing and expanding a lot. And I know there's a lot of beginning wholesalers that are out there just wanting to figure out how to even start doing anything at all. Uh, there's a lot of different ways of doing it, but um, I know we'll discuss that here in a little bit. Okay, that's a great segue. So um, for anybody watching this, you know, the wholesaling is a word that's kind of thrown out there uh, by a lot of um, gurus that are talking about, you know, how to make money, no money down, you don't need money to make money, and da 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 and, you know, the private jets and all this and all that that you see on these commercials at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. But what, in, in, can you explain to us, I know you've got a, an academic background, can, can you explain to your average person who may not even, who may have heard the term wholesaling, uh, might know a little bit more about the concept than the average person, but really doesn't know what it is. So just, just kind of give us a little bit of insight to what exactly is the strategy of wholesaling properties uh, in, in the most detailed fashion possible. Can you share with us what your definition simply is of uh, wholesaling? What is it? What, 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 what's the function? What are you trying to accomplish for the buyer and the seller? Uh, and obviously, how do you make money? I mean, how do you, how do you profit uh, or your brokerage profits from these deals? Yeah, I mean, wholesaling is just, uh, I would say just the investment real estate in a nutshell, but it requires, I would say a lot of uh, patience um, just, and a lot of hard work in the beginning to get started. Um, wholesaling is just, uh, and just to really break it down is you're, you're contracting a property and I know there's a lot of legal aspects involved in, in different states and different cities. Um, a lot of wholesalers will have their own different definitions. So my definition might be a little different just because of how I do things and how we legally get through all these avenues to get the property under contract. That's one of the first things that we have to do, of course. Um, and you know, prior to that, there's a whole process, but just getting the property under contract with the you know, whatever the far bar you, you have available with your local real estate brokerage or just uh, real estate uh, in that particular state. And once you get that property under contract, of course, you have to ensure that you have an inspection period and you have a, you have an agreed purchase price. You have all the address, legal description, everything filled out correctly so that you're not um, 
you, you make sure that everything is accurate. Once you get all that information down, you have the seller signed the contract and you have your broker or yourself, depending on how you've been in business for a while, you, you sign the contract as well. And then at that point you have an agreement to pretty much give that seller the money that they need. If you if they're, you guys agree to $80,000 and within 30 days, they're going to get that $80,000 in cash because most of these wholesale deals are all cash, sometimes hard money, which is another thing we'll probably get to, but, um, Doing that process, you will have an inspection period where, I mean, legally, of course, you can have to inspect the, uh, the property to ensure that it is something that is worthwhile for your investors. You won't go out there yourself, check it out, and that can provide ammo in the sense that maybe 15 days from now that you'll be able to touch um, or something like creating that spread. Now, the spread is the pretty much if you contract it at a certain price purchase price you're able to at least make at least five to ten grand commission on top of what the purchase price is so you can sell it for 85 you can set it up to 89.9 however much you want depending on what the market is allowing you to sell the property for um, you don't want to overdo it whether it be a rental or a flip you just have to kind of gauge all those numbers prior to um property and doing that so pretty much once you have that spread and you're satisfied with whatever you want to make, try to find that investor as soon as possible so that you're not having the seller lingering there. Um, Cause sometimes it happens. You'll have an investor out there that say, Hey, I'm interested in this property. You get them in, they are seeing it and they're inspecting them themselves. Uh, whatever terms you have, whether it be a non refundable deposit uh, to set the property up, um, or to get it under contract for another buyer to be able to get everything under contract. Um, I think you have to give those investors some time to make that decision, but then at that point you have to be careful. Uh, so that's why you always have to build a good investor base that before you even start doing getting properties under contract, start building that investor base so that you're not wasting your time and, and losing out these sellers and then wasting your own time. Um, and trying to, you know, fumble maybe on the like the day 25 or so and give that seller the cash they need and you're losing out on the deal there and then you're burning bridges there with just the seller and also maybe even the investor there too. But um, wholesaling, I mean, that's pr pretty much the, the mechanics of it in, in that sense is being able to contract the property, trying to sell it to another investor, trying to get it within 30 days because cash is king in, in, in that realm to be able to move it as fast as you can and for the investor to add it to their own portfolio or, or flip it however they need to. So I think that's kind of the, the view that I have. Uh, I know there's a lot of other angles to it, but that's, I'm sure that's, that's a good description. So uh, the million dollar question in, okay, I think after that's a, that's a very great, uh, very good uh, explanation of the process and kind of the mechanics behind it. So how are you finding these sellers? And then uh, obviously you're putting yourself in the middle. So you also have to find buyers for these contracts that you have. So uh, talk to us a little bit about some of your strategies in identifying these sellers why maybe they might be selling or, or are they calling you or you guys are advertising or how are you guys marketing to those uh, sellers out there, uh, those motivated sellers. And then also how are you looking at, um, you know, getting that property once you have it under contract in the hands of, um, you know, your, your investors who want to pay cash for those properties. So in terms of the, the sellers, uh, how we find them, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it in terms of, uh, you know, cat uh, driving for dollars. Um, is something that I've seen other wholesalers do through YouTube or, um, or just meeting with other guys that are, are out there and just driving by certain neighborhoods that, you know, are pretty hot um, and writing down the addresses so you can send them specific letters to the to the owner or the absentee owner. Once you find that address, you will go through the you know local property appraiser online, search the address, find the mailing address, 
um, or you can just drop off your card or knock on a door um, if you're brave enough to do that too. And um, you know that the whole direct mail option is, I think the, I will say the the blood of wholesaling, because uh, you have to find those deals. And you know that's just the, I would say that was one of the main parts of, of doing that. The, the bigger you get in terms of finding more sellers, the more money you can put into the direct mail to send out maybe even 10,000, 20,000 pieces of mail within certain areas in the future, once you're up and running, you know, you can, that, and that's of course, you know, that's the potential that you can have to have that many um, direct mail, uh, mail outs to these sellers. Once you have, of course, the investor base to be able to match that and sell those really quickly. Um, I mean, another way of course is to able to network with other people, um, family and friends, or whoever's has a distressed property, um, other signs out there too. Sometimes you can find other leads where, um, whether it's for sub by owners or even rental signs, sometimes they, they will have their rental signs up and you can easily give that owner a call and buy that property for them too. Kind of think outside the box, uh, in a lot of ways where if one one aspect isn't working as great for that specific month at least you know you put that time in and for that and then put in you know organize your time to put in another aspect of finding another seller or finding a seller in another avenue so that you're not limiting um your your i guess your i would say your train of uh leads coming in um and i think one of your other questions was finding the buyers right Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, so finding a buyer, I mean, that's once you have a property, uh, you know, one of the things as brokers that we do is able to create signs, your banded, you know, signs that you see on the road, um, house for sale, you know, with your phone number on there, the price and all that. And you get a lot of calls from that. Uh, sometimes you would get some hokey calls and some, some people are just going to be questioning and not knowing what to do and that's where you come in you have to treat yourself as an advisor in that sense to answer their questions and figure out what they need qualifying them especially because a lot of the people that end up calling off the signs are beginners but you still end up getting a lot of leads through that regardless um, putting it through craigslist um, you know having a whole investor base already built up through constant contact or some other email list that you have organized, you can send that to them as well, letting them know, hey, look, this is the property that I have here. Can't you ever, you know, to be able to contact every single one of them is almost impossible. So to send a mass email sometimes really does help unless you have everything super organized and you know who to call. Um, mm -hmm. That's another aspect of really organizing your buyer base um, through, yeah, and, and when you, as far as like finding them, you know, we, I know you've attended CFRI, which is the uh, one of the events that we have, real estate events out here in Central Florida. Um, just anything where you can find buyers um, that are just going to you know, seminars or anything like that where you can just, you know, put your card out there, put yourself out there so that if they're looking for a property, they know who to call. Okay. There's a, so I, you know, one of the biggest debates I get into with especially, you know, <clears throat> new um, investors and, and new people in the business, um, because although you and I are, are licensed agents, you know, there are a lot of people in the business, especially from the investment side, that are not licensed agents. They're just, you know, regular people who have a passion and uh, a dream to be an investor. Um, but the, the debate that I always enjoy talking to people who are in the business is if you have a deal that's a really good deal, will that bring the investors to you? So uh, I guess a better way to ask the question is, should the focus be for somebody who's just starting out, somebody who literally came from a different line of work, they're, they want to get their first deal done, they, they've got the, the real estate fever, um, you know, should their focus be on, hey, get lock up a good deal on a contract and you'll find investors or should they talk to investors first, 
find out what they want and then go out and attack the market. What's, what's your opinion on that particular debate? Um, you can do it either way, um, whichever way works for you. Everyone's different. Uh, when I first started into it, it, I was doing nothing but investor calls. And so establishing the investor network, getting to know them, and then eventually once you pick up a property or say if you're working as a team like I am, um, you know, when we have properties, I'm able to actually get those properties locked up um, because someone else picked it up within my company um, if you have that luxury. But as, as an individual, I would say to always do both all the time, kind of manage your time to develop those investors. But one of many things to, if you do pick up a good deal, um, that will come naturally. It, you, when, when you're doing signs and you're doing Craigslist, people will know what a good deal is and you can get those things locked up within, you know, within 24 hours, depending how good it is. If it's a home run, um, I've had deals lock up within, within two or three hours because as soon as I started marketing or I call someone, they, they end up, they know what, what they were looking for and this is what, what they want. And most of the time you'll miss out on other, other investors will miss out, but that's a good thing. You create that real estate fever for them um, to be able to come back when you have another deal coming through your pipeline. So okay. just come. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, I know it's a, it's a, it's a lot of work trying to balance your time with finding deals, but uh, I just found that, um, you know, it's one of the hardest things to figure out where you should focus your energies. Um, yeah. Last thing we'll talk about as far as sellers uh, kind of locking up deals on the seller side What's been your number one source? If you had, and you've mentioned several different sources of leads that uh, you know flow into deals that get locked up on their contract. What has been in your time in wholesaling the number one successful lead generation for you? Uh, I will say, uh, I'll say it's. I will have to go through my list. But I would say a lot of the deals that I've dealt with have been through MLS. And now that's something that is a little tricky for people to get into, especially if you're not licensed, because you don't even have to be licensed to do wholesale. But if you are licensed, you know, you have to maneuver yourself within that realm very carefully so that you're not stepping over the listing agents or, or the other brokerage that is listing the property in MLS. To let alone that you have to wholesale it for them. Uh, so I think honesty is the best policy with that. Let them know that you have investors um, that you're working with, and that you can tie this property up within you know within days. Because depending, of course, on your numbers and and what your investors are asking for, you'll know that from the head of, uh, ahead of time. Once you're looking at that property and you're like, oh, right, this is a great property, great percentage. This is exactly what I'm going to be. Sending a contract for getting in a contract, and I know it's going to be um, sold within you know four or five days. Um, if you know for sure, hundred percent. I want to say hundred percent. I will say there's ninety percent of the time you know that it's a good deal. Ten percent most of the time, you know, if if it does not move for some reason, period that you have there. Uh, you, of course, you know, you have to cut your losses there and just cancel the deal. Um, sometimes it just, it depends on the investor base and when the investors are buying on the season, um, you know, especially in the beginning of the school year, doing Christmas, um, you just kind of have to pick up the right deals at the right time. Um, and you just never know you can pick up some crazy deal and you think it might not work. And you, you have a huge investor base and there might be that one guy that's just for some reason just wants it. So I think uh, real estate has amazed me in how the, the array of people on what they actually want. Um, I think I, I kind of answered your question. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, on just on a, on a weekly round number general basis, how many offers are you sending out per week um, through the MLS right now? I will say about 20 offers a week through the MLS. Um, and, and the other source that we have, uh, uh, that I have available, that something that my broker has set up for the entire company is him doing direct mail. And so 
I'm, I'm I was saying second in charge of dealing with all the leads that are coming through to be able to see if that is something that we can get under contract. Um, so that's another avenue that I work through as well. That's another major source of the of the leads and, and income that I uh, end up getting through all that. And so when these sellers call you, what is your process? I mean, so if if if, if I were to call you and you know, I got one of your postcards or one of the company postcards. What are you trying to do uh, with the conversation? And I'm sure you're trying to do this in a pretty quick manner because you don't want to be talking to sellers for the majority of your day um, because you're in business to make money. So what, what, you know, what's your process as soon as somebody calls you? Let's say somebody gets a, a postcard from Equity Pro and you answer the phone. What's, what's, what, what's your goal on that phone call when they call you? Yeah, so once we get this lead, uh, we have a whole system set up that we can get the, the right email and then we end up giving that particular lead a call, whether it be in Brevard or Orange County. Say they're on Brevard County, I do a little bit of research on where the property is all about because we have a system that just kind of comes through and they ends up going through a whole process of uh, identifying where the address is and where the property is. and so. I do a little bit of research to kind of get myself acquainted a, bit, a little bit about it if you have that option but most of the time uh, if you don't have any of that just call them up and introduce yourself my name is caesar i work with equity pro um, i know that i received your inquiry or in, if they left a voice my heart where it is just introduce yourself and say hey how you're doing just be genuine about the whole process because a lot of it they're not going to know anything about real estate themselves so you always have to keep that in mind, especially using any jargon that you use um, to ensure that you just have to keep it on, on, on their level. Um, so when it comes to talking with them, try to qualify them and figure out what's going on, what's their, what's their dominant buying if in that situation is what we call them, uh, DBM, and, or rather this not dime, dominant buying motive, but that's for investors, but more so for their motivation um, to sell the property. Because then if you hone on that motivation and figuring out what they need and why they need to sell it for, then you're able to cater a little more um, and actually agreeing to that purchase price and developing that relationship at that point. It will make things a lot easier down the long run if you're having to ask for an extension our reduction um, it just makes things a lot easier to be able to have a, a relationship at that point just to, instead of just treating them as just a, a customer uh, at McDonald's or something like that so I will say because a, a lot of these people whether they're, they're just wanting to cash out their, their portfolio um, most of the time you're gonna find out that they're in this distress situation and they're gonna have a lot of title issues uh, so be prepared for that find out what's going on try to be have make them be honest and the one thing that we always do is make them talk more than you do you ask the right questions you ask you know you kind of follow the conversation but try to really uncover peel that onion in regards to what they're wanting um, out of the uh, out of the whole deal because um, then when it comes to asking for or making your offer to that seller it will also be really easy um, to make that offer and for, for them to be easy to negotiate with that as well. That's my take on it. Some people just go into gun ho on it and they're just going into it and they're like being car salesmen. And it's like, that's uh, for me, that's just doesn't work for me. Everybody's going to find their own way of, and techniques to kind of develop. And I know a good book that we just uh, read is by Brian Tracy. Um, I forgot the name of it because we have, we, we read books all the time as a, as a group in our company. To figure out you know all the techniques to be able to you know talk to people um but in regards to just you know talking to sellers you know you do your own research on your own develop you know a way to talk to people talk on the way home kind of put yourself in situations where you know what objections you're going to get make a list of the objections that they're going to be getting whether oh i got your letter you tell me the offer or um a lot of the that's the most common one it's like what's your offer what's your offer and it's like i can't make that offer because i haven't even analyzed the property i'm trying to figure out what they need and trying to get 
what they need and or what they're asking for is probably the hardest part um, in our process. And that has to kind of come naturally over time. But when you ask what they actually want, it seems like they don't want to give out that number because then they want they you know they don't want to get ripped off or anything like that. I always ask them about three times, and if by the fourth time I'm not getting anything, you know, I, I just I just kind of cut it from there because I don't want to annoy them either. But you can have to play that game too as well to ensure that you're not losing money on the table because they might have something like totally ridiculous. Um, they might want something more retail than anything, and then you might be wasting your time trying to analyze the the deal. And the next day, give them a call to only know that it's going to be a retail uh, offer that they're looking for, that they're not looking for just a quick cash deal. So I think if you're able to determine whether it's a retail or cash deal with those sellers right away from the get go, you'd better save yourself a lot of time. Um, however you want to do it, whether it be sell a financing or creating a good cash offer for them. There's a lot of different avenues to really set this, uh, set the, set those leads up um, however you need to, to make that money. Okay. Awesome, man. I do appreciate the uh, explanation on that. Um, so now let's go, let's take a little bit of a, uh, a deep dive into your company, um, Equity Pro. Uh, I know when, when you and I first met, um, you know, I was kind of blown away by the fact that there was actually a, a brokerage with real with realtors, licensed realtors, um, all across the board that were specifically focusing on wholesaling. Uh, because in my mind, you know, a licensed brokerage is really focused more on the traditional retail side of a business. Um, so a really unique thing. I know you guys just did a new website. Um, you guys have been around for a little while, and um, so. Share with us a little bit more about Equity Pro and kind of what you think uh, sets you guys apart from everybody else that's out there uh, in the business doing wholesaling right now. Yeah, I mean, Equity Pro is just a wholesale brokerage. Um, it's uh, They've been around for about 12 years. At least my boss has been in the business for that long. Um, and so, you know, we just opened up a new office in Tampa, opening uh, up in, in Jacksonville. So, Definitely our team is growing. You know, you'll see a lot of different acquisitions coming through and a lot of different properties being sold um, in our pipeline. In, in, in a nutshell, as far as how we work, addition um, associates, um, which acquire the properties either through sell leads or um, through MLS and uh, some other avenues that I mentioned were like Craigslist for sale by owners. I've gotten lucky uh, a year ago, getting two properties out here in College Park, um, one of the you know top-rated uh, towns out here in in Orlando, and so and that ended up selling pretty fairly quickly there. Craigslist, Zillow for sale by owners, um, signs, um, however way you can find your uh, those deals, uh, those are avenues, but. As an acquisition associate, you're responsible to find the deals. However, you need to. Um, I think that was a challenge for me when I first got hired was to be able to find that, put something on our website for, of course, our senior associates who have been there for a long time, have thousands of investors on their list, more so than I do, and they're able to sell those properties within, you know, within 72 hours or so. Um, so at that point, you know, as we're developing that pipeline, there's a lot of marketing that goes into it within our website, which is just amazing in terms of the numbers that we have on there for each property, whether it be recommended as a rental or flip, um, whether it be in Tampa or Orlando, Brevard, wherever it may be, we have all of them all out there. We have everything on our website that caters to the investor. Now, of course, we have our numbers and they're all estimates and we try to do the comps as best as we can. Um, you know, I always kind of just tell my investors, just do your own diligence, make sure your numbers are closest to ours because everyone does their calculations very differently. But in regards to our website, you know, that's kind of our bread and butter right there. Um, they see that we do, we do a lot of paper, uh, paper clip, uh, click campaigns, Facebook, Twitter, we try to get on everything at, uh, at that point. Then my broker is more so ahead of that stuff. Um, he, he knows what he's doing with that. 
I just kind of just work from being in, in selling the properties and acquiring for it. Um, and so we work as a team trying to just wholesale deals. Um, you know, and I think anyone can do that, especially if you're beginning yourself and you want to develop a team of five people, you know, trying to get all these deals coming through. I think that's a real great way to really get into the business once you have yourself established enough, um, doing enough wholesaling in, in, the, in your experience there. Okay, cool, man. It sounds like a, a really innovative uh, company. I know you guys are always pushing the envelope to be on top of technology. And, and like I said, I mean, your website, uh, for anybody that's that's looked at it, uh, it's a pretty powerful machine. And, um, you know, I'm actually on your email list, so I see a lot of the stuff you guys send out, and it's very investor-friendly. I mean, I can look at a property. You guys have done a tremendous job of, you know, making me aware of the opportunity and I can definitely see why it would be very easy to avoid a lot of, um, you know, those those calls where investors are calling you, asking you some of the best preliminary stuff. You guys have made it very easy for me if I was an investor to pick up a property um, to make a decision on on yes or no if I was going to uh, put a bid in on something. So, um, you know, I definitely yeah. I definitely applaud you know you guys for the stuff that you're doing. So as we wrap up here. Um, you know, real estate's one of those businesses, man, where I think the majority of people that uh, have, you know, an appetite to maybe start a side hustle or side business or are sick and tired of the nine to five, when you bring up real estate to them, and I'm sure you find this anytime you're getting together with friends or family um, they, they, there's always an interest of like, well, you're in real estate. Yeah, man. I've always had a passion for real estate. Yeah, man. You know, I've always been interested in it, but I'm, I'm a little bit scared to get involved in it because, you know, I have to have all this money to buy all this real estate. And, you yeah. know, if you don't have money, you can't make money. So, you know, talk us through here as we're rounding up just some of the lessons that uh, maybe some of the myths that you might've had going into the real estate invent the real estate investor world that you now would share with anybody who's potentially thinking about getting involved or somebody that's a a, a newbie into the business. Um, you know, what lessons have you learned? What myths have you kind of disproven at this point? Um, and what are some of the things that you feel like um, are must if you're going to be successful in real estate investing? Yeah, I think there's like two ways of explaining that because uh, with me, my experience is going to be a lot different um, in comparison to individual like yourself who's developing on their own. Um, so I think that the startup process of, uh, and having those type of transitions never really had that type of experience because I saw myself going into a company and I was going to somehow just do real estate. Uh, somehow I was going to learn how to learn about the contracts, learn how to make deals happen, um, learning how to talk to listing agents, to sellers, uh, investors, or whoever it may be. I, I knew that that was one of the many things that I was going to do entering into a company because, you know, they have all the duties in terms of doing it by yourself. You have to develop a lot of those duties on your own, um, creating those habits and organizing, organizing yourself to, as your own company at that point yourself as your own company developing all those things uh, naturally to be able to find the, the, those leads to talk to the investors um, a lot of it I got lucky that I had a mentor um, that came along with the company to tell me how to work through the business how to speak to people um, how to be aggressive and learn how to submit offers and I think one of the main things as any beginning investor should get themselves going into real estate is get themselves a mentor, somebody who knows the business a lot that will give their time to kind of, you know, so that you can pick their brain, figuring out how to maneuver through the process of just real estate in general. Um, in terms of like money, you know, like I said, you don't even have to have your license to do wholesale. Um, and you don't have to have a lot of money, I feel like, um, to do it. Uh, I feel like if you have a couple of thousand dollars here and there to be able to start off to do a couple of contracts and, and putting something in deposits or escrow, 
uh, finding the right title company to do the the right job to do a title and lean search so that you're not getting yourself into a situation where all of a sudden you, you find like thirty thousand dollars in liens or anything like that i think finding the right tools to do your job at the end of the day will benefit you in the long run um, i think some some myths I don't know if I've heard too many myths about it as much. Um, I said the, the, the experience has been real different in, in terms of how I came to be. Um, can you rephrase that question? Because sometimes I just talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, um, like I said, I mean, when you're talking to somebody who's um, interested or, or, hey, you know, I've been looking at this house down the street. Um, I just had a friend call me from Brandon. He says a couple for sale by owners right around the corner from him. He lives in a complex. And just in the course of that conversation, um, you know, there's just a lot of myths about, you know, how to acquire properties, what you need to do. And it just seems very intimidating to a lot of people when you think about real estate and, you know, they, they, they have an interest in investing. Um, they don't know anything about the strategy. So, you know, when I was talking about myths, I was basically just saying, you know, I'm sure there was some apprehensiveness that you had or apprehension, I should say, going into the process um, that is shared by a lot of people who are looking at this um, as an opportunity to financial freedom or at least a better opportunity to earn income and something that's enjoyable um, that isn't going away. I mean, let's face it, a real estate was a good business 100 years ago. It's going to be a good business 100 years from now. It's just a, it's a basic human need. Is housing so um, you know what, what are some of those myths that you know you may have said to yourself man I, I don't know if I can do this because of this or I don't I'm a little bit scared of this or I'm a little bit worried about not knowing this that you could share with a person that may be thinking about getting into the business um, that you've kind of found to be that it's not really that much um, you know diff it's not very difficult to overcome that uh, but you do have to apply yourself. Any, anything that comes to mind? Yeah, the, the concerns I think that are very common are the talking to different people. Uh, you know, especially if you find yourself to be very shy, a lot of it has to also do with confidence to be able to, you know, practice your speech, practice your communication prior. Um, but sometimes, you know, you have to really just put yourself out there in the situation where you're just talking to the seller and you're saying you're you calling for sale by owner and you don't want to mess up the phone call. You don't want to sound like uh, inexperienced or anything like that because then you won't be able to acquire the deal. Right? And I think that nervousness is natural, um, especially when you're trying to, you know, negotiate um, the process of negotiating, I think is part of one of the hardest challenges for, any person getting into the business. Um, uh, I know that it took me, it's still taking me some time to get over all those negotiation skills and be able to hold myself firm and being able to make that offer without necessarily being too scared or um, just the dogs working there, but without necessarily being too, um, you know, concerned about how the other person is going to react. I think, if you're able to develop that relationship and, and the communication with that specific seller um, or even investor alike, um, however the communication might work, I, I think you just have to, it will, will just come within time. Uh, as long as you're doing your research, educating yourself on how to speak with people, there's a good book out there that I'm reading right now. It's called Verbal Judo, um, being able to learn how to maneuver yourself through a lot of the crazy communication that people have, everybody has communication styles. I think um, the negotiating aspect, the uh, communication styles that you have to adapt to, um, I think a lot of the, the stuff that you will go yourself into, I've always said this, I think there's like top three things out of the whole wholesale real estate business is to be able to coordinate, communicate, and then negotiate. Uh, like those are like the main core things to be able to focus on because if you don't know how to coordinate, then you know how how are you going to know how to close a deal or when to close it if you know how to communicate in a in a professional manner? Um, how are you going to make yourself credible out there? And you know, I guess negotiating goes in within the communicating aspect, but that's I feel like negotiating is a whole different 
uh, enhance communication where you have to really hold yourself accountable and firm on those deals for the money that you want to make. So I think learning through that and finding yourself a mentor, finding the right people to talk to, picking their brain, finding different books, YouTube videos. I mean, the resources are out there nowadays. The, the fear of putting yourself out there, um, I would say, is less than it maybe was when there wasn't YouTube or, or anything like that or many books about wholesaling. I think wholesaling is getting very popular now. But, uh, you know, I think you, as you do more research, you develop your own style, develop your own way of doing it. And I think the, that was my major challenge coming into it. Um, and I think I've gained a lot of confidence really putting myself out there, reading different books, um, ensuring that I'm always keeping up to date on the laws of real estate. Uh, just, I think, just if you know you're going to put yourself out there, you know, you're going to, I think, accept the fact that you're going to fail, accept it, do it, learn it, and you're going to gain a lot from it. Awesome, man. Well, I do appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, this is, uh, you, you want to leave your contact information in case anybody, you know, wants to contact an investor or somebody that may want to join the team? Yeah, no, my, my whole phone number and my email, everything. Sure, whatever you want to do, man. 407-476-1411, Caesar, C-E-S-A-R, at equitypro.com. Awesome, man. Well, uh, best of luck to you moving forward in all your, your deals. We'll love to have you back on the show. Uh, love to have guys that are out there doing deals, talking about deals. Um, so, you know, this is definitely the first time we've had you on the show. We want to have you definitely back with uh, more expertise from you and just sharing your experiences because, um, you know, there are a lot of people who are looking at this as a potential uh, opportunity and just don't even know how to start. So, um, you know, talking and hearing guys like yourself kind of express your experiences will definitely help. So, Thanks again for being on the show. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions for the real estate job, you can call me directly on my cell, 407-797-8116, or go to my website, realestatejock.com, and schedule a free 15-minute consultation. Have a great day, guys. Make it a great week, great month, and we'll see you soon. Awesome.